the last presentation in this series on the propositional calculus contained a proof by strong induction of the meta theorem that all whiffs are balanced, which is to say that they contain an equal number of left hand and right hand parentheses. There are other facts about the theory that we've so far described that can also be proved, and in the written materials that accompany this course, which are available through our website, there is a proof of the meta theorem that all expressions added to lists of whiffs in conformity with the inference rule of modus ponens will themselves be whiffs. And that is a proof which proceeds by strong induction on the line number appearing next to any expression in the given list. Now the formation rules that I have so far described by which whiffs are formed, valid expressions, meaningful expressions in the language of the theory that we're evolving, can lead to some quite complicated looking strings of symbols. And so what I'm going to do now is to introduce some terminology by definition which will enable us to simplify some of those expressions. And then after that I'll come on to introduce some rules for dropping omitting parentheses without exposing ourselves to any risk of ambiguity as a result. Now the first expression that I'm going to introduce by definition is this. So in this case, if alpha and beta are whiffs, for this lengthy string of symbols, we are going to instead write this expression. Now I'll go on in a moment to give some interpretation to some of these symbols which will hopefully make things a little bit clearer. But for the moment, again, wherever this string of symbols appears in our language we are going to be able instead to write this much shorter string involving this new symbol, this inverted V. The second of the new symbols is a V type shape the right way up. And we're going to say for open paren, open paren, this L on its side, alpha, close paren, arrow, beta, close paren, where alpha and beta are any whiffs, wherever such a whiff as that appears, a whiff in that form appears, we're instead going to be able to simplify by writing open paren the whiff alpha this V symbol followed by the whiff beta, close paren. And the third symbol I'm going to introduce is this, this two-headed arrow. So wherever this lengthy, complicated type expression, an expression of this form, whatever these uh, symbol, whatever these whiffs alpha and beta might be, wherever such a long string appears, then instead we are going to be able to substitute this string of symbols involving, standing here in the middle, this double-sided arrow. Now these new symbols are effectively being introduced by definition. They are simply shorthand for longer expressions involving just our primitive connectives, which is to say the arrow and the sign, the L on its side the reverse L on its side. Again, our primitive connectives, this L on its side, the arrow, and this is being introduced by definition in terms of those primitive connect connectives. And again, in the case with this double-headed arrow. Here we come to some rules for omitting parentheses. And again, omitting them in such a way that we don't, as a result, incur any liability to ambiguity. The first rule for dropping parentheses is that we can drop the outermost parentheses from any whiff, but not, of course, from any subformula. Now, a subformula is a whiff with, that stands within a whiff. It is, for example, the alpha and the beta in the case of a whiff, for example, open parenthesis, alpha, arrow, beta, close parenthesis. In that sort of case, the alpha and the beta will be what we will call, what I call here, subformulae, whiffs within 
a whiff. We cannot, for any whiff within a whiff, drop outermost parenthesis, but for the outermost parenthesis around a complete whiff, those parentheses can be dropped without the risk of any ambiguity thereby arising. So we can rewrite the whiff, open parenthesis, this L on its side, alpha, close parenthesis, as this L on its side, alpha. Again, we drop these outermost parentheses. And we can rewrite this whiff, formed in accordance with our formation rules, as simply alpha, arrow, beta, dropping the outermost parentheses. But we cannot rewrite this whiff as this, this element side alpha, arrow, beta, because the open paren, alpha, arrow, beta, close paren, is a subformula within this original whiff. So we can drop those outermost parentheses, but we cannot drop the inner two. The second of our rules for omitting parentheses is this. Since this symbol, this reverse L on its side, is a unary connective, that is, it stands in front of just one whiff, we can drop parentheses from the whiff outer paren, this L on its side, alpha, wherever it appears, not just as a complete whiff, if these are the outermost parentheses, because then they can be dropped in a compliance with this first rule, but even where this appears as a subformula, we can drop those parentheses. So, for example, we can write this expression as this expression, dropping these inner parentheses this time, because that L on its side is a unary connective. And then, of course, once we have this, it's by the first rule that we have up here for dropping the outermost parentheses that that can be written simply as L on its side, L on its side, alpha. And, of course, we can rewrite by this second rule this alpha arrow paren L on its side, beta close paren, as alpha arrow L on its side, beta close paren. And then again, by the first rule, we could drop these outermost parentheses to simplify even further, so that we have this as a whiff. So this whiff is the same as this whiff to the extent that it is formed from it simply by following these rules, the two rules that we have so far for emitting parentheses. Now the third rule that I'm going to adopt for emitting parentheses relates to strings of symbols where whiffs are conjoined by this inverted V or disjoined by the this symbol the other way up, the conventional, more conventional V. Now I say conjoined and disjoined for reasons that we'll come on to shortly, but the point now is that where we have strings of whiffs interspersed with these symbols that we've introduced by definition, then we can drop parentheses around them. And the reason that we can do that without exposing ourselves to any risk of ambiguity is that these symbols, which I'll come to describe as the symbol in the case of the V upside down for conjunction, and in the case of the symbol being the V the right way up, just disjunction, is that those connectives are what we call associative, or the operations associated with those symbols are what we call associative. Now, I'm not going to go into here what it is for an operation to be associative, but again, I refer you to the written materials which are available through our website uh, if you want to, uh, to take that a little bit further. Now, I've introduced this double-headed arrow again as a shorthand defined in terms of these primitive connectives. But now that we have these rules for omitting parentheses and rules for introducing these other connectives by definition, 
we can now see that this expression can itself be simplified using one of our other connectives introduced by definition to this. Now it's my guess that at this point, having seen these new connectives introduced by definition using long strings, what appear to be long strings of symbols formed as whiffs, you may be asking yourself why? Why these particular definitions in the way that they've been set out? It might appear to you, for example, even rather random. Well, it's not random, and the reason that these new connectives have been introduced in the way that they have has to do with utility. Now, let me just run through the connectives that we have thus far. We have this, what I've hitherto described as a reverse L tipped over onto its side. And from here on in, I'm going to term that negation. And I'm going to tell you that it's intended to have the meaning in English, it's a unary connective. Negation alpha is intended to be read in English as not alpha. Our other primitive connective, the arrow, a binary connective this time, alpha arrow beta, is I'm henceforth going to call implication. Implication. And I'm going to tell you that that's intended to be read in English as if, well this is the closest in English, if alpha, then beta. Or alternatively, alpha implies beta. And now to our connectives defined in terms of those two primitives, uh, Indian TP. I'm who going to refer to, and I did at some point just a moment ago refer to it as conjunction. Conjunction. My writing is slow as well as bad. Again, a binary connective al alpha conjoined with beta is intended to be read as alpha and beta, or perhaps better, both alpha and beta. The V-type sign I have and will continue to refer to as disjunction, and it might not surprise you to learn that the intended interpretation of that, again, a binary connective alpha disjunction beta is intended to be read in English as either alpha or beta or both. Sometimes in English when we use either or, we will intend that to be understood exclusively, either something or something else, but not both. But let's be very clear here. This disjunction means either alpha, where it disjoins alpha and beta, either alpha or beta, or both. And finally, to what I've rather inelegantly hitherto described as a double-headed arrow, I'm going to descri describe that henceforth as mutual implication. Mutual implication. And I'm going to tell you that it's, it's to have the intended meaning in English, again, a binary connective, alpha, if, and only if, beta. Now, you may recall a moment ago, I defined this symbol in terms of another of our newly defined connectives, and I said that alpha mutual implication beta is intended to be understood as or as a shorthand for alpha arrow beta conjoined with beta arrow alpha and here I've according to the rules for omitting parentheses omitted the outermost parentheses from both of these whiffs. Now you'll see here that this whiff here has an arrow going from alpha to beta and another one going from beta to alpha. Well, here we are. Alpha to beta and beta to alpha. Music